Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today's video we're going to discuss the uh, basic functions for now on the uh, radio that comes with the uh, Red Cat RS10 Rock Slide uh, crawler. Now, there are programming features uh, that you can mess with um, through the control panel. But if you don't want to get into the advanced setup or you don't quite understand it, you got to do a lot of reading and read through it. You'll get the hang of it. It's really not that difficult overall. But for basic setup without messing with any of that stuff, your top control here is going to be trim control for your front. Okay? So you want to kind of eyeball your tires to see how straight they actually are to start with. Now your rear steering trim is down below here. And again, eyeball it first, see where things sit, okay? And then give it a drive, see what happens. Uh, next is going to be your control here. This is going to control your throttle. Now, your throttle percent at 15% is doing this. Okay, so obviously we got to stop that from happening. So you can leave it at zero. You can bring it the other way, which will activate your forward movement sooner. Okay, now I like to leave mine around zero. I actually went through uh, programming part of the ESC yesterday because I found a programmer uh, sheet for the ESC and I finally got my throttle set up so that I can leave my throttle at least at zero. And I've got full forward, full reverse the way I should have, etc. Anyway. You've got a battery monitor on here. That tells you how much volts are left in your batteries in your radio itself. Now the other thing you've got is what's called dual rates. Now mine are set at about 24%. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Um, 76%. Now what this is going to do, if you bring it down, let's say 26%. Try steering the truck. You get that much movement and that's it. Okay, and that's going to apply to all four wheels. So, the lower the number, the less you can steer. Now this has some good advantages to it. Now you can go up to 100% here. You can program things to actually throw your servos uh, to 120%, but if you do that, you'll rip your servos apart. Now, I don't run mine anywhere near 100%, and I'll explain that in a minute. I'm running uh, actually now around 75 uh, because I got these new tires on here. They're slightly wider uh, than the stock tires, um, so I had to reduce things a little bit more, which is fine. I still get plenty of steering, you know, not worry about that at all. The other thing is, is you got to stay away from the motor wires, okay? But that's your dual rates, and that's what that's going to control. So no matter how you set up your main steering system and program it into the radio, your dual rates are controlled down here, okay? So you can change your throttle. Now, even if you set your throws up for 120%, you're going to have to really have those dual rates turned down, I would imagine. I haven't tried this, so I can't tell you for sure. Um, but I would leave things, you know, basically set everything at 100% uh, for all your functions and then um, play with it from there with your main trims. That would be the simplest way. Um, so if you set it somewhere around, say, 70%, this is going to be absolutely a perfect setting because you're guaranteed that the tire is not going to come to the back of the motor. Because there are associated problems with the RS-10 and one of those problems being that when you get it out of the box these wires are actually hanging out a little bit 
So when you when your crawler articulates, um, it can push the wires towards the tires. But also, if you have too much steering coming at your tires, your tires can rub into the wires in the back of the motor and pop them off or break them, that sort of thing. So you're going to want to do a couple little tweaks first, one of which is I've extended all my wires, okay, so that I could wrap the wire around the motor, zippy tie it on, feed it up through, and I've got plenty of extra uh, length and wire so that no matter which way my crawler goes, I'm not going to pull at any of these wires at all or overstretch them type of thing. So it's it really helps a lot but you got to use the same gauge of wire uh, from your motor to your ESC some guys are actually cutting the plugs off and running a straight new wire in that sort of thing I chose to go with um, plug wire system and uh, this way uh, it doesn't mess with my warranty um, I also took the original servos out because they're 100 ounce servos which are fine they're adequate to get started with but you really should have stronger servos so I've got 180 ounce Traxxas 2075 servos installed and then I just upgraded to these uh, Bighorn uh, G-Made tires for much more improved traction and you know a little bit wider too which is nice and much much softer than the originals so this helps an awful lot not that there's anything wrong with the stock ones actually to be honest with you guys at this point in time as of the time of this video I still have no real crawling experience with this machine. I got it in the winter time, so I've been kind of working on little tweaks and stuff here, checking out other guys' mods, see what they're doing, see what I want to do or not do. And, you know, there's a ton of mods you can do to this thing. Now, um, to get on with uh, things, the um, as far as the steering setups go, okay, um, if you turn your wheel to the right then you should go to the right if you turn your wheel to the left to the right and you go left that means you've got to go into the programming menu here and change that because you could have things reversed okay and like I said the programming menu really is not that difficult to understand it takes maybe a couple of tries you'll figure it out um, you know and uh, but you'll get the hang of it uh, anyways but if everything's functioning normally left is left and right is right then you're all good to go now your button down below here it's going to control your steering and how it behaves so on default generally um, you have front wheel steering only active okay push the button once you now have the crab move which makes the vehicle move sideways Okay, it's kind of a really neat maneuver. Um, I don't know if I'll use it that much, but whatever, it's there. Um, next mode, press it again. You then have four wheel steering. Now this is something that gives you a competitive edge against uh, any crawler that only has front wheel steering. You'll be able to get around obstacles and maneuvers that they'll never be able to do because they don't have four wheel steering. So four wheel steering guys, rules. Next one, brush it again, and you get rear wheel steering only, which can also be very handy. Okay, so and then push it one more time, you're back to normal setups. Okay, so pretty easy, pretty simple as far as all that goes. Um, like I said, I'm still learning a bit about the programming portion myself. When I have it mastered at that time, I will cut a complete full video on how to program this radio inside and out, frontwards and backwards. You get the idea. Now, um, some of you are probably looking at my crawler right now and seeing that I got two batteries in here. Um, what I've done, see now if you turn your remote off, your wheels will start running. So, turn off the car first, then your radio. Anyway, back to the battery things. I just stuck this extra battery in here just for the video because I just uh, fully charged my battery last night. Didn't want to monkey with it. Um, so I just, I have my other spare battery that's actually out of my volcano that uh, I slid in here for the video. Which also gives us an interesting point because some 
people may ask this, can you stack batteries? Well, obviously you can. There is just enough room to fit two six cells um, stick packs in there. Now that would be on this model. I can't say about the older RS10 that had the hump pack battery, if you could do it or not. But on this newer version, uh, that's the upgrade version, yes, you can stack two stick packs without a problem and you wire them in parallel so that you keep your voltage the same and double your milliamps. When you do that sort of a thing, by the way, um, you must match your milliamps of each battery exactly the same, okay? And your voltages, of course, as well. So if you've got 238 packs, you can stack 238s, tie them in parallel as long as they're also both the same style of six cell stick pack, okay, at 7.2 volts. And they get tied in parallel, which means positive goes to positive, negative goes to negative, kind of something like this sort of deal, okay. And then when they're tied off to a Y adapter at the end, your voltage will still be the same as one pack, but your milliamps will double, so you'll get a lot of runtime. Now just on the 38 pack yesterday, I ran for a good two hours of messing around with this thing. I was driving it outside in the snow. I wasn't really making the crawler work work. But over two hours before I finally puked out the battery and uh, I was like, man, is this thing ever gonna die? So you know, a 5,000 would probably keep you going for the day. You know what I mean? So that gives me some encouragement that at 3,800 I'm getting a ton of time as it is. So if I go to a 5,000, that's even better because the batteries, as you know, are a real bit of a pain to get in and out of the caging. So you don't want to be monkeying around and changing that on the field type of thing, right? Especially when you're out in the bush. So maybe throw a 5,000 in there. But watch your run times too, which is very important because the longer you run the system, the hotter the motors get, the hotter the ESC gets, even though it is fan cooled. You know, you want to try and keep your temperatures down as much as you can. And crawling itself does keep your temperatures down on your motors and stuff, but it's the extensive runtime you really got to be careful with. Um, especially on brushed motors, they just don't take the same kind of brutality that brushless does, but when it comes to crawling, brushed motors tend to rule over brushless because they have the torque capabilities at the very low, low speeds, you know, and of course at the higher end, but. Um, anyways, um, if you have any other questions or comments, you know, feel free to uh, ask. Um, as a heads up, no, I do not have the steel gears in here yet. I'm waiting until these ones break down and then I'm going to put the steel gears in. So, um, and I have a few other little future mods in mind that I want to do, but hopefully this answers your questions and answers the question of the guy who asked for this video. Um, and like I said, as soon as I learn the programming inside and out flawlessly, at that time I will have a video, but to get you up and going in the basics and what the controls actually do, um, you know, that's where you're at. So, um, hope it helps, and uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video.